out here in the Twin Cities for this afternoon's Midwest Regional Final between the Syracuse Orange Men and the Illinois Fighting Illini. And now let's meet the starting lineup. For Syracuse, at forward, a 6'9 freshman for Carlisle, Pennsylvania, number 30, Billy Owens. For Illinois, at forward, a 6'6 junior from Chicago, number 25, Nick Anderson. For Syracuse, at forward, a 6'4 junior from Los Angeles, number 32, Steve Thompson. For Illinois, at forward, a 6'8 sophomore from Chicago, number 30, Marcus Liberty. For Syracuse, at center, a 6'9 junior from Detroit, Michigan, number 44, Derek Coleman. For Illinois, a 6'6 senior from Aurora, Illinois, number 33, Kenny Battle. A 6'5 junior from New York, number three, Matt Rowe. For Illinois, a guard, a 6'4 junior from Carbayum, Illinois, number 33, Steve Bardo. For Syracuse, a guard, a 6' senior from Washington, D.C., number 20, Sherman Douglas. For Illinois, a guard, a 6'4 junior from Madison, Illinois, number 13, Kendall Gill. And it is the 50th season as head coach for the Illini, Lou Hipson. Number one, Illinois. Number two, Syracuse. Back with the tip in a moment. Moved to Bucknell in Colorado State in Dallas, then got by Missouri here on Friday night. Illinois went to Indianapolis, where they ousted McNeese State in Ball State, and then got from behind to defeat Louisville, 83-69. Well, Vern, I think that uh, Illinois must contain Sherman Douglas today, his penetration, and I think Syracuse must take advantage of the pressure defense by getting layups. And they need to get over the top of uh, some of the smaller people of Illinois going to the hoop. First question is answered, Tommy. Kendall Gill draws the assignment defensively on Sherman Douglas. Here's Stevie Thomas. He's got Bardo on him. Douglas penetrates, puts it up, rims out, rebound. Syracuse, Thompson up and in. And they had Nick Anderson out playing Matt Rowe. That takes him off the defensive glass. Syracuse in the zone right now. Going to play a little soft. Make them look. Test the outside shooting of... Uh, and there's the great rebounding by the guards. That's going to be a factor. Shot by Battle. The rebound by Gill. And he got the basket. And again, it's Gill on Douglas. That might switch later on. But that's how Lou Henson is opted to start the game. Thrown away. Well, it's size against quickness. The big guard, Gill, and there's Douglas going to the hoop. And Thompson came up with the rebound to, for the putback. Again, Lowell Hamilton, the senior captain, not starting. He injured an ankle three minutes into the game Saturday night. Kenny Battle playing with a bummed-up right knee. That was injured when he slipped in a water spot here during a shoot-around on Thursday. Now they say Illinois is a very small team, but the average size of Illinois is bigger than the average size of Syracuse. And the difference is in the backcourt. And that's where I think Illinois is hoping to take advantage. And they have so far in this game. Liberty missed the shot, but the rebound obtained by Kenny Battle. Now, the interesting thing, there's so much made about this team, but on average, they're just like that. There's Kenny Battle. Uh, they may be small, but they get over the top of anybody. That's a Syracuse play. Like, in your face, we can do it, too. Syracuse. On the offense, another turnover. Take a look at the alley -oop. Well, a key play that helps Syracuse get going most of the time, but in this zone, you've got to protect against guys going along the baseline. Syracuse not alert. 4-2 Illinois. We played two minutes. The winner gets Michigan. Steve Fisher, by the way, is watching this game in our studios. He'll be James and Jim's guest at halftime. 4-2 Illinois. 
Marcus Liberty had a terrific game the other night. This is again, that's 0 for 2 for Liberty. In the first game of the tournament, he went 0 for 7 against Bucknell and did not shoot in the second game and then had a strong game in the win over Louisville. Back it comes to Stevie Thompson. And again, Bardo has drawn the defensive assignment on him. Turnover number three. Strong to the basket. Battle. Illinois, once they get a rebound, will come at you very quickly. Five can get up there so fast you don't know what to do. So the guards of Syracuse will be really tested. They're trying to hold that fast break from happening until Coleman gets down to protect the basket. Now the pressure applied by Illinois. It's a six-footer Douglas and six-four Kendall Gill. That's the point Tommy was making in the backcourt. Illinois has it at that. Matt Rowe. Been a quiet participant in recent weeks. Well, they're putting their, Illinois is putting their biggest power person on the inside on Matt Rowe, a guard. And just, he's going to be trying to cheat to help in on the inside and rebound. That's going to give Rowe an awful lot of opportunity. Kendall Gill tries to follow. Liberty can't get the rebound. Coleman does foul on Liberty. And just a footnote to that Matt Rowe three-pointer with that. He set a Syracuse school record. He broke a tie. He held his right to go. He's now got 80 for the season. Lou Henson in his 14th year as head coach of Illinois. 5-4 Syracuse lead. Now they're going to let, uh, instead of Douglas fight his way up the court, they're going to let Rowe bring the ball up a lot against Anderson, the forward. They've got Liberty defending on Coleman down in the post. He fronts him right now. Owens. That's good. He'll shoot one. You know what I think happened with Billy Owens is that these coaches kind of went to the stat sheet in this tournament and they hadn't played Syracuse and they said, well, you know, Billy Tom uh, Stephen Thompson's really a great offensive player, their leading scorer. We got to stop Douglas. We got to do something with Coleman. Let's gamble off Billy Owens and that's just turn him loose and really give him a gave him an, an opportunity to show the skills that everybody in the East knows he has. Jimmy Behan really said that Billy Owens has sublimated himself to the team concept. He was the team at Carlisle, Pennsylvania, where his team won four state championships. And he has really fit himself into this ball club. Anderson counters. That's his first two. Well, he just slid right into the gap that time. Quick pass. Nobody got to him. That's well within his range. Douglas brings it across the timeline. Again, the defensive matchup, Gill on Douglas. Liberty is on Coleman. Battle on Billy Owens. Stephen Thompson, now the switch as Bardo has Rowe. Rebound, Kendall Gill of Illinois. Bardo, Anderson. Two more. What a quick release. That hit him at the letters, and it was up. And we are tied at eight. Syracuse team started the season with 13 victories. Then they lost four of five. They had Sherman Douglas out with a back injury. They opened Big East play, and they lost two games with him out. They came on at the end of the year, third place finish in the Big East. Here's Coleman, and the foul on Liberty. Interesting to me what's going on against Sherm Douglas. They're trying to contain him, not let him get wild. But Sherm Douglas is very, very in control of himself, not pushing anything that's not going to happen. He's reading the defense, and he's, but they have two big guards trying to defend against Douglas. Now, Lou Hansen made a change I don't know he wanted to make, but Liberty draws two quick fouls. So the sophomore from Chicago is on the bench. And Lowell Hamilton has come into the lineup. Again, he injured an ankle when he fell over the back of Felton Spencer three minutes into the ball game on Friday night. And played only 13 minutes. There's Bardo who chases down the loose ball. 9-8 Syracuse. Lowell Hamilton will test it early. Blocked foul. And Coleman picks up a quick one. Well, they went to him quickly, as you say, and uh, he looked like he got up as high as he can get up against Coleman, which is uh, his normal jumping. So 
Maybe a little fake-out job here by playing Hamilton. Well, you saw him in pregame warm-ups and said he didn't leave the floor. Well, they had this, they have this uh, tip-in drill that they come out on the floor with, put the ball on the backboard and jump up and try and tip it back up onto the backboard. He never left the ground on that drill, so didn't look good, but on that shot, he elevated. Hamilton gets one of two. We're tied at nine, 15, 10 to go, first half. This matchup is so interesting to me, a big guard. And a big guard with quickness stop Sharon Douglas. He's not fighting it whatsoever. He's trying to find the, the real opening in that Illinois defense. That roll looks underneath for Stevie Thompson. There's a takeaway by Kendall Kill. And Douglas got caught with the round. Foul. There was the matchup you talked about. And the winner in that case was Kendall Gill of Illinois. Time has been called on the court. We're tied at nine. Gill against Sherman Douglas. We want to see the size six foot four of Douglas of uh, Gill go against a smaller player, six foot Sherman Douglas. Most big defenders are afraid to go up and challenge Douglas. Gutsy move there by Kendall Gill. Uh, it's funny, Sherman Douglas, right after the captains met at midcourt before the game, turned to the officials, all three of them, and he said, watch the guard play, or watch the post play. And there's the second alley-oop for Illinois. Can battle with the basket, Illinois back on top by two, and Douglas and Gill. Douglas told uh, Larry Lembo, Jim Reif, and John Moreau, please watch him underneath. In other words, ignore me. And there's Douglas penetrating. Uh, Douglas that time, everybody uh, with a white uniform played him for the pass. Had an easy shot. Kendall Gill gets the pass from Steve Bardo. Entry pass, Hamilton for two. Once you get the ball down into the corner like that, it's two points. And Coleman did the smart thing, he backed off. Hamilton was limping as he went back up court after making the layup. 13-11, Illinois. Syracuse, of course, in the Final Four in 1987. Billy Owens, no good, and that'll be Syracuse ball. Illinois has not been to the Final Four since 1952. Substitution now, David Johnson makes the uh, entrance into the ball game and replaces Matt Rowe. This is a pattern that Jim Beheim has gone through the last part of the season. Well, I don't think they totally utilized Rowe as well as they could with Nick Anderson on the outside. Rowe only handled the ball a couple of times. Hamilton. Coleman. And it's 13-13 at the 13-30 mark. Syracuse presses, but only when they want to spring a surprise on you. They load you into thinking you can bring the ball up, and all of a sudden they'll snap that full court pressure on you. Now Syracuse in a man-for-man. Kendall Gill spins back to Lowell Hamilton, tries the jumper, short, and Thompson. Looked at Jimmy Beheim that time, Division II Coach of the Year. Fourth winningest coach that's active today. Well, the ball has come over and nestled right below. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I was going to hook it from here. Uh, I saw you hook it in warm-ups. You still got the touch. Out here about two hours before the game started. Saw Tommy hit two hooks from three-point range, as a matter of fact. And a sweet and low, shooting the foul shots. That's his nickname, because that's the way they say he plays. Illinois gets it back, 13-13. Bardo, off the glass, Hamilton, battle for the loose ball, Douglas has it for Syracuse. Nice pass, Billy Owens. And Syracuse has speed at all positions. Douglas, beautiful heads up. Reads the defense like a pro. 15-13, Syracuse. Anderson was a one-man terror in the win the other night. Here's Douglas on the fast break. Gill behind him. And Gill passes on the attempted block and lets Douglas get two. And it's a four-point lead at 17-13. 
We talked about Syracuse 13 and 0 start. Illinois got off to a 17 0 start. Kendall Gill went down with a stress fracture in his foot. Missed 12 games. They are 30 and 4. That's a season record for victories. There's Gill. No. And the rebound battle won by Owens. The outlet pass. Three on two alley oop. Run your alley oop off the fast break. You better go out and challenge Billy uh, Stephen Thompson on the wing. Six unanswered points for Jim Beheim's bunch. They lead 19-13. Rebound on the boards. Douglas, the guard, ends up with the rebound, but the big people well out in front. And there's Billy Owens, and he can run. Now, again, a fast break. The alley-oop, you've got to go out and challenge Stevie Thompson on the wing. Don't let him get near the basket. Otherwise, it's over the top of the defense with the pass. Saw the streak that uh, Syracuse is on. Both of these teams capable of streaking. And this one belongs to Syracuse. That's 10 in a row. One of the problems when you have a small front line, if you're going to jam the offensive board, you send four people back. That leaves one defender. Syracuse exploiting that beautifully now. Kendall Gill. Turnover, Illinois. Coming up next, Duke versus Georgetown. The final team to get into the final four will be the winner of that one. Duke or Georgetown will take on Seton Hall next Saturday in Seattle. The winner of this game gets Michigan. And how about the effort of P.J. Carlesimo's Seton Hall team defensively in the last three games? I think they're surprising a lot of people that they're that good defensively, but what really impresses me is the very intelligent guard play they're getting. Pushing it up, taking the opportunities on the fast break when they're there, or getting into their set offense. And how about that Australia? Andrew Gaze. Yes, Adam. I guess. Yes, yes. I mean, I want to go down there and see what's going on down <laughs> after. They got a lot of three-point shooters down there like him. Well, he's enough for Seton Hall, I know. He got hot yesterday. Here's Liberty coming back in with two fouls because Kenny Battle got his second. So Battle will rest his uh, weary right knee, and Liberty comes back in with two. It's been a 10 nothing run now for the Orange Man. And the free throw problems. David Johnson is at the free throw line. He hit two critical free throws down the stretch. He's only a 50% free throw shooter when they won over Missouri the other night. Jim Beheim said when he got those two, it was like an answered prayer. 21-13. <laughs> Syracuse has to get out by at least 10 points coming down the last two, three minutes of the ball game because of that foul shooting problem. This is an Illinois team that has come from behind in big games earlier this year. Still, no, they're cold now. And again, they first look for the outlet, but settle for Sherman Douglas. Oh, with Johnson in there playing the other guard spot, they got an additional rebounder, and boy, they're making Illinois pay, getting it up quickly off the outlet. It's a 12-nothing edge offensive foul. It's called on Larry Smith, who had entered the game off the bench in a guard spot for Lou Henson's team. Sherman Douglas has played with such poise here in this early part of the first half. Hasn't forced a thing on his own game and has orchestrated everybody else getting into what they do best. They changed the matchup on him. They've got the smaller Larry Smith on him. Billy Owens adjusts the shot and hits it. And it is a 12-point edge for Syracuse. You know, when you look at Syracuse as a coach, you say, what kind of a system do they have? Do I defense their system? No, they don't have a system. I have to defense five guys individually. That ends the string as Larry Smith goes back door and gets the basket. It was a 14-0 run in the Friday night win over Missouri. The Orange Man exploded for 16 unanswered points in the second half. Well, see how nicely they take the pressure off Douglas when they put the press on. They bring Owens up, a forward, power forward at that, can dribble it up. 25-15. David Johnson. Freshman from Morgan City, Louisiana, who spent his senior year in high school playing in Maine in a prep league. And it's back to 12. Syracuse, for the last few trips up the court, has been in a man-to-man. -man. Spin move, baseline, blocked out of bounds. 
That's another problem that Illinois had in their win over Louisville. They had 13 blocked shots against them in that game. You watch Coleman right now. Number 44 does not go up on the penetration of Gill. Stays there, ready to block there, but from behind, Johnson blocks it just because Coleman was there for the intimidation. Herman Harid has come into the lineup now, the fifth-year senior. Kelly, Kenny Battle with the alley-oop. It'll be like a comic strip with these alley-oops. <laughs> 27-17, to go, first half. Winner gets Michigan. Steve Fisher again watching the game, the interim coach. That shot short. Here comes Illinois in transition. Kendall Gill by Thompson, two. Precious few fast breaks. Illinois gets most of theirs off steal. And Jim Beheim has called time. The lead is now eight. Michigan and Seton Hall, two more, will enter that quartet today. And right now, Syracuse leads Illinois 27-19. And Kendall Gill has gone back to uh, guard Sherman Douglas now. They tried Larry Smith for a couple of minutes. Foul on Smith down underneath as he went at Derek Coleman. This Illinois team, in posting a 30-4 and four record, Tom, has shown a, a heck of an ability to go in streaks. They were down by 18 to Missouri earlier this year. Well, Came back you, and won. When you look through their press guide, they've got it documented on the scoring streaks uh, or runs that they've had in ball games with this pressure defense. And uh, it's very, very impressive. So they can explode at any time, and I'm sure Syracuse is well aware of that fact. Being very cautious, bringing the ball up against their press. Uh, they have not attacked the basket, but they, Illinois has not been able to really get out there and make any steals. Coleman gets them both. Derek Coleman playing with a sore lower back. He injured his tailbone in the final regular season game against Georgetown. Sat out the first game of the tournament against Bucknell. And this is on Billy Owens. Carlisle, Pennsylvania, where he played for Dave Lebo, Jeff Lebo's dad, the outstanding guard in North Carolina. 118 and 11 in high school. <laughs> Guy does not know what it means to lose. Fast break again. And Douglas pushes it forward to Stephen Thompson. Six points for Thompson. And the lead is 31-19. One thing that Illinois is doing is keeping four guys to bang the offensive boards. That's leaving only one man to stop Syracuse's fast break. That's the second foul on Billy Owens. Here's the last steal as it went inside, and Owens just reached out. And there's a two on nobody as even the quick guard couldn't get back to protect. And, Tommy, if you counted the bodies dressed in white, you saw four Illinois bodies very close to the basket. That's so important when you when you gamble. If you've got a small front line and your strength for size is really in a backcourt, you put one of your guards in on the boards a little bit to help you, figuring that this guy has got a good chance to get some offensive rebounds. Bardo was that man in the last game, ended up with eight rebounds. Kenny Battle, who started his career at Northern Illinois, transferred when the coach left, and is in his second season now at Illinois, the soul and the heart of this team. Uh, Sherman Douglas. The trap hasn't even gotten close to Sherman Douglas to bother him or confuse him. And again, they go back with Owens to help bring it across the timeline. 31 20, 7 29 to go in the ball in the first half. Winner gets Michigan. Off the glass, no. Rebound. Coleman gets another rebound. Puts the shot through. Derek Coleman had 12 rebounds in limited play on Friday night. But Sherman Douglas created that opportunity with his penetration. Oh, dear! Put that in the highlight, Phil. Well, lead with it. Oh, what a shot. How did he do it without a trampoline? 6.50 to go in the half. There's the answer from Billy Owens. And he's got nine points to lead all scorers. Is he going to be tough the next three years? Syracuse hitting 75% from the field. They're 15 of 20. The shot doesn't fall. 
Watch the Illinois agility. Well, they challenge him underneath the basket so that he has to lean around, and instead of throwing a right hand up, he has to hook it with his left. How he did that, I don't know, because there's really no room. Here's it from another angle, and he has to do it with his left hand off the basket, and that is probably the toughest way to kiss, the, kiss it off the glass. That's a pretty good example of why he's a, a part of the heart and soul of the Illinois team. There is Kenny Battle. You know, they created an award that they're going to give out from here on in for Kenny Battle. They're going to call it the Kenny Battle Award. And uh, because here on it's going to give, uh, going to be given to the guy who shows the most hustle on the ball club. And Lou Hinson says, this year, I could give it to five guys. In fact, maybe I, I will. Battle again. This one won't go. Stolen. Two more. Here comes Derek Hughes again. Oh. Attack the basket. Illinois, no shot blocker. Once they got to pass the trap, they got it back into the hands of the best ball handler, Sherman Douglas. It was a three-on-two, and he knew who was going to get it right away. Owens has 11. Kendall Gill off the glass, kissed it nicely, and it falls through. 37-27, under six minutes to go in the half. Douglas, spin move. Dish, Coleman, no. And the rebound belongs to Illinois. The lead is 10. Nick Anderson, short. but there was only one man back against three Syracuse players. 37-29, Coleman at the other end. Here's Sherman Douglas. Short. Rebound, Illinois. Gill, one on three. And he does pull back. Hamilton. No, no. Illinois ball. Look at all these white jerseys around here. There's that shot once again. But uh, it's being banged around there, battle with great hands, puts it back up, and makes it pay. But there were four people jamming. That time it worked to their advantage. Look at them all, three Syracuse players. That's what they're counting on, is overpowering you with their guard on the board. Larry Smith back into the lineup now for Illinois. Feeds Lowell Hamilton, and the rebound comes down in the hands of Derek Coleman. Rebounds 13-12 now for Syracuse. It's a 37-29 ball game, 4-44 for the first half. The surprising statistic that I saw in Syracuse against Missouri is that Missouri out-rebounded Syracuse 49-27, uh, and Syracuse still won. <laughs> Loose ball, Hamilton gets it to Larry Smith. Smith, left side. Smith, the quickest of the guards. The shot is good. And Lowell Hamilton is limping badly. The senior captain of Illinois. Favoring a sore right ankle. It's 37-31. A 12-point lead has been cut to six. Here's the alley-oop. in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Midwest Regional Final. The winner of this game takes on Michigan with Glenn Rice and Sean Higgins next Saturday in Seattle. And coming up later this afternoon, Georgetown against Duke to fill out the Final Four Quartet. Syracuse jumped off to a 12-point lead on 75% shooting from the field. But now Illinois has fought back and they trail by four. We were doing a piece on foul shooting, and we were talking to Coleman, and they, they wanted to get him to make some statements about foul shots, and he said, don't interview me. You want to interview Stephen Thompson. He said, I'm hitting 70%. I'm hitting 70%. Shot. 
Kenny Battle goes to the uh, Illinois bench, and Marcus Liberty comes back in, both playing with two fouls. And Coleman at the line, where he is four of six, five of seven. I'd say he has played very intelligently with regards to his foul. Backed off some things like a year ago, he would have gone and ended up picking up a foul. There's another turnover. Harid made that happen. Herman Harid, who's been a defensive whiz in the tournament. Coleman. Too strong, too strong again. And it's come down for Illinois. Three on one. Smith loses control, foul. I never thought that that would happen because Rowe, who really is not a leaper, had two guys on the wing. Here's five guys crashing the boards for Syracuse and banging. Nobody really can get a good fingertip control, soft shot to it. But uh, once they get it, look what happens. The backcourt is virtually uncovered. And they had an opportunity right here, a three-on-one. Uh, couldn't get the ball to the wing. Larry Smith at the line. Both teams in the bonus. Got the first. Larry Smith had a tragedy in his family just before the game on Friday. His mother suffered a stroke, and she is resting comfortably and in good condition in Alton, Illinois now. That happened just prior to the game Friday night. Here's Stephen Thompson back into the lineup now. And Matt Rowe goes to the bench. And Larry Smith comes out for Illinois. So we'll set the lineups for you. Bench scoring now, Illinois, 14 to two. Both teams go about eight deep. Here's Harid, who doesn't score much, but plays uh, terrific defense, along with Douglas Thompson, David Johnson, and Coleman on the floor for Syracuse. And for Illinois, it's Kendall Gill, who's the man guarding Douglas. Douglas with the dish. That time, the quickness prevailed on Gill as Gill tried to steal the ball. Watch him with the ups, little up move, and that's too much off balance, and Douglas will make you pay for that. Once he got into the defense, all they had to do was try to adjust in the fouling him. But you've got to try and contain Douglas. Don't let him get in your defense. That's what every coach says, because he will kill you. Sherman Douglas, the hero of the win on Friday night. Six consecutive free throws in the last 108 of the ball game. Ah, right. And he gets this one. That's the interesting thing about Jim Beheim's team. They are notorious for their poor free throw shooting, but he's always maintained that they they usually and I put a qualifier in a line under that but they usually shoot fairly well down the stretch well they don't keep any statistics though do they no that, that we could verify that a lot of teams will keep a statistic on critical free throws those made in the final four minutes of the ball game it's an unknown stat at Syracuse out of bounds Syracuse ball. I'll tell you, Herman Harid has played exceptional defense when he's been called upon in the two games we've seen him play. That time he forced the turnover by getting on top of Liberty. Harid held Colorado State's best in the season opener. He's been an inspiration to the Syracuse team as well. Here's Coleman. That's where he's gotten so much better. Uh, decently out there range and also getting his low post game together vastly improved player and maturity wise he understands when to go after the block shot when not to Marcus Liberty Hamilton that's another turnover that's eight for Illinois there's one for Syracuse at the conclusion of today's NCAA tournament game we'll select the Chevrolet players of the game in conjunction with the award, Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of both schools. Turnovers now five for Syracuse, eight for Illinois. Gill has it knocked loose. Anderson. And Liberty finally gets one to fall. He has got a touch. He doesn't have the physique of some of these other Illinois players, but he's, and he's more of a finesse player. Uh, he can be tough. Fareed saves it in the backcourt. He's guarded by Liberty. They skip the pass over to Stephen Thompson. Offensive foul. One of the problems for Stephen Thompson is that he jumps so high, it gives the uh, defender an extra count to get underneath there. That time, the defender had great position. It was a charge. That's the second foul on Steve Thompson. Billy Owens also playing with two, and 
Three men with two fouls each for Illinois. Battle, Liberty, and Larry Smith. This is Steve Bardo, the junior. Number 35, the best defensive player on the Illini. Nick Anderson, turn around, short. And his phase at 43-37. One thirteen to go in the first half. The winner gets Michigan. Seton Hall will take on either Georgetown or Duke in the other semifinal next Saturday from Seattle on CBS. Georgetown and Duke coming up at the conclusion of our game. And again, Steve Fisher, the Michigan interim coach, is in the studio with Jim Nance and James Brown. Here's Thompson for two. That time they trapped Douglas, that, and he got the ball alertly to Thompson, who was all alone going to the hoop. Bardo weaves his way through. Three-pointer. No. Nick Anderson. Yes. What a horse he is. Wow. Final 30 seconds of the half. Syracuse has led by as many as 12. It's at six points right now. And they have done so on torrid first half shooting. They're 18 of 28 from the field. Gill almost got it away from Douglas. Thompson. is their best defender and he ends up trying to defend against uh, Thompson. Thompson a forward smaller than the Illinois big guard who is 6'6". So he's got a quickness advantage on Bardo. And Stephen Thompson at the line where he has had terrible problems. You know, you know one of the ways he tried to break this thing and psych himself out? He, for a period of time in practice he was shooting free throws with his eyes closed. I mean, that one, I, I, when I read that, I said, how, how did he hope to improve that one? <laughs> it's all a mental game. Shot's no good. And that's the end of the half with our score. Syracuse 46, Illinois 39. Our coverage of the NCAA basketball tournament. Covers 11 to 4, Syracuse. And the leading scorers in the first half. Owens and Coleman with 11 for Syracuse. Anderson has 10 for Illinois. The game has not been played by Illinois at the frenzy pace that they usually play. And they rely on that pressure defense to create that frenzy and up-tempo game. And Syracuse has handled that just beautifully. Lou Henson in his 14th year trying to get an Illinois team to the Final Four for the first time since 1952. And the winner of this game takes on Michigan. Battle, Bardo, Gill, Anderson, and Liberty. Anderson gets the basket. I had a size advantage on Thompson. They went there, elected to do that. Here's the pressure defense. First time it's really worked in the backcourt. Ball inbound is Irvin Small is in the lineup now, number 24 for the Illini. From the corner, Gill, yes! Spunky kids, I'll tell you that. And Illinois gets the first baskets of this half. Five points, and the lead is just two. And that time, uh, Syracuse handled a pressure defense very easily to trap on Douglas, got it to Owens. Foul will be on Nick Anderson. One of the most amazing things that I've seen in this tournament for Sherman Douglas is how well he understands strategy. I mean, really puts the whole game plan together and understands it, the strategy side of the game. You know, they call him the general, General Sherman. Well, he plans so well, they ought to have had him plan the D-Day invasion. That's, I mean, he's capable of doing that. Coleman gets the first of two. Sherman Douglas, of course, not highly recruited. That's been a good story out of Spring Orange School, High School in the D.C. area. And this year, he replaced another Spring Orange graduate who played at Syracuse as the all-time leading scorer, Dave Pink. And if you can believe it, Douglas said he thought he would be only a role player at Syracuse when he went there. 
47-44. He is a role player. Yeah. The starring role. <laughs> Billy Owens, guarded by Nick Anderson. Check the matchups. Douglas and Gill. Now they switch, and Anderson is out on Sherman Douglas. Irvin Small has Coleman in a low post. 18.40 to go. Winner takes on Michigan. Here's Billy Owens for three. Rebound. What a great shot by Nick Anderson. Steve Bardo, the junior off guard. Right, off the rebound, no opportunity to uh, push it up hard against the Syracuse defense. Liberty, having started the game relatively ineffective, is on the bench. Hamilton with an ankle problem, and there's a great shot by <laughs> Ken Battle. What a spunky bunch. They're going to come at you. They don't give up. Lou Hinson said, uh, we don't give up. The only way uh, you, you've got to beat us. Pure and simple, we don't give up. What was a 12-point lead midway through the first half is now one. David Johnson, the freshman on the floor for Syracuse, along with Douglas, Coleman, Thompson, and Owens. Douglas, back to Coleman, he's fouled. And Irvin Small gets called for it, number 24. There's Eaton Sleep. Oh, Eaton Sleep. Here's the crashing of the boards going on. And good rebound by Anderson, but can't find an outlet, man. That allows plenty of time for Syracuse to retreat so they can't get an easy hoop on the break. Coleman gets the first of two. In the Friday night game, Derek Coleman picked up three quick fouls. Had to play conservatively most of the game, played quite well. He's had an unusual problem lately. He has fouled out of four of the last five games since he got the back injury. But he only has one foul to say well within himself. Offensive foul, Steve Bardo. There was the quickness against the size of the guards. The smaller player, Douglas, taking advantage of the bigger player, Bardo. 48-46, 17-35 to go. The pressure applied by Anderson on David Johnson. Syracuse, of course, runners up for the national title in 1987. I'm sure Lou Hinson thought that Douglas was going to bring the ball up against that pressure defense. And I think Jim Beheim has responded by saying, why well, put Douglas under all that pressure with these big guys? Let Owens, who can handle it, bring it up. Gill playing with a blood silk jersey, guarding Douglas. Stephen Thompson. Oh, nice move. Short. Johnson with the rebound for the Orange Man. It's a 48-46 game, under 17 minutes to go. Billy Owens. A left-hander off the glass, put it on the floor. The best part of that move is that he wasn't sure they had retained possession. He'd gone back to protect against an Illinois fast break. Foul by David Johnson. Nick Anderson is. We're at the Metrodome in downtown Minneapolis. A crowd of uh, nearly 34,000 on hand for the second meeting ever. Between these two, the winner gets Michigan. Next week in Seattle, Seton Hall takes on either Georgetown or Duke. And how do you like what Seton Hall is doing? They're doing the tournament right. They went out to Tucson early, stayed out there, didn't come back, then went to the Denver Regional. And they did not come home after winning last night. Here's two more for Kendall Gill. And the pressure applied. P.J. Carlesimo was going to bring his team back to East Orange, New Jersey, but they, he said, why don't we go to Los Angeles? And so they got in the locker room yesterday afternoon, and he said, we'll vote. You guys decide. There was a long pause. One of the subs in the back. Here's the shot underneath. And the rebound taken down by Illinois. One of the subs raised his hands, and I want to go home. P.J. said, you've only played three minutes all year. You're not deciding this. We're going to L.A. for a couple of days. You think that kid will make the team next year? <laughs> so Seton Hall is in Los Angeles before they go on to Seattle. Illinois, 10 turnovers now, to 8 for Syracuse. You know, Kendall Gill at the press conference yesterday was very funny for Illinois. He said, you know, we've got all these players, and everybody says how difficult it is to play us. And he said, when we come up on the fast break, they don't know who to pick up. We're supposed to have an assigned man, but we're all the same size and have the same haircuts. So they don't know who we are. They can't <laughs> tell us apart. Shot for three, Thompson rebound. Douglas gives it back to Matt Rowe. That's for three as well. This time it's Urban Small with a rebound. 
quickly to Larry Smith, who's come back in the lineup for Illinois. They can tie with a basket here. It's 50-48, 15-45 to go. Smith, entry pass, Nick Anderson. Goaltending, Derek Coleman. And we are tied at 50. Nick Anderson roaming around in that low post reminds me a lot of Charles Barkley and uh, Bernard King. Quick releases and also power moves. Matt Rowe got that one for three. That side of the court must look like the uh, carrier dome. How much of an advantage might Syracuse have playing in this dome since all their home games are in the dome? It might be because they, they feel very comfortable playing in here. The big expanses of the carrier dome, similar to what we're seeing here. Up and in. Irvin Small. And it's 53-52 with 15 minutes to go. Dobson. Oh, what a move. Quickness at the forward spot. Pays off. At the other end, battle. And he'll shoot a couple. Now, that's interesting. After a made basket, they're able to uh, push the ball up the floor that quickly to attack the hoop. That's the kind, type of frenzy this man wants. Get it up quick. Get it up quick. Two times, guys. Uh, Lou Hinson gets no respect. He's Rodney Dangerfield. You know? <laughs> He's averaged 21 wins for 14 seasons. Yeah, they had a losing season when he took over from Gene Bartow. There's his wife, Mary, who is from Lanark, Illinois. And one of the reasons, ironically, that Lou Henson took the, uh, took the Illinois job when he was offered was because his wife is from Illinois. Time has been called. The star of that team and a longtime star of the Chicago Bulls is now one of Lou Henson's assistants. The interesting thing to me, Tommy, is how, in Lou Henson's case, his hair keeps growing and ours keeps going. He's got more now than he did then. I'm not going to say a word. I'm not going to say a word. You, you talk about your own hair. Oh, you, <laughs> you can talk about his, but don't talk about mine. Okay. <laughs> 14, 20 to go in the ball game. Steven Thompson for two more. Lead is back to four, 57-53. Larry Smith, Hamilton, defended by Derek Coleman, and Syracuse has it. Nine turnovers, for, or ten turnovers for Illinois. At the other end, loose ball taken by Kendall Garrett, Kenny Battle. Good dribbling, and big guy. Hamilton foul by Stephen Thompson. That's the third team foul on Syracuse. And the third foul on Steve Thompson. Don't forget, Duke versus Georgetown coming up next in East Rutherford, New Jersey. How do you like that game? It appears that what people are trying to do to Georgetown is play a slow-down game a little bit, use good passing. Duke's got all the good passes that might give Georgetown a lot of problems. Princeton did it. Hamilton misses. Anderson rebounds. Winner of that game gets Seaton. Oh! Rotation of the zone left the weak side wide open and very alertly taken advantage of by Illinois. 57-55. Illinois has not led since early, early in the ballgame. Syracuse jumped off to a 12-point lead. The number one and two seeds in the Midwest. Watchman came out of the Dallas Regional. Illinois from Indianapolis. Goal for three. That's his third three-pointer of the ball game. Well, they have elected to cheat on all the other players, forgetting about Matt Rowe on the perimeter, and Douglas is starting to zero in on him. Hamilton with the answer for Illinois. Up quickly it comes. Well, I think uh, Syracuse is losing a little concentration on how quickly uh, Illinois can bring the ball and put it back in your face. Illini did get to the regional finals in 1984, but they lost to Kentucky and Lexington. That shot no good. Rebound, Kendall Gill. 
They start normally two juniors, or three juniors and two seniors. Battle in Hamilton, the two seniors. There's one of the juniors, Nick Anderson. There it was, again, very alertly, uh, Syracuse did not make, uh, pick up their assigned men, and Illinois took advantage of it. Bayheim timeout. Into the play, and it's over the top of the defense, and wide open. Anderson hit that shot, but great pass and good read of the defense by Bardo. Uh, shots like that, one reason that Illinois is 9 of 10 from the field in this half. 90%. Syracuse, 5 of 10 in this half. All of Illinois' players can dribble the ball and pass. No basket. Anderson with a foul before the shot, and Stephen Thompson goes to the line where he has had so many problems. No, he does not go to the line. Beg your pardon. That is the fourth team foul. And the ball will be inbounded. Team fouls, it's five on Illinois now, three on Syracuse. 11.48 to go in the ball game. 60 to 59, Syracuse led by 12 in the first half. Coleman won't go. And a nice pass. Kendall Gill, one on two. Travel. What a great defensive play by Matt Rowe, however and a hustle play by either Thompson or Douglas. I didn't catch who it was, but Rowe just went right up there and made sure that Gill would not have a good angle to attack the hoop. Almost taken away, foul called on Larry Smith. That's his fourth. The Piranha defense in action once again, trying to create steals. That's the first time Syracuse has not been able to inbound the ball to either Douglas or Rowe. But Larry Smith, the junior out of Alton, Illinois, picks up his fourth foul. And that is the sixth Illinois team foul. Next one. Oh, oh what a lurk. <laughs> Douglas. That wasn't a set play. They just spotted the defense not looking and paying attention and gave Coleman the nod. Smith drives. Douglas with the foul. Right there. Here's the alley-oop coming up. You see Douglas and his defender, Coleman's defender, not alert. And right on the money is the pass. Irvin Small, Steve Pardo come back in for Larry Smith and Lowell Hamilton. I was chatting with you and I were with Sherman Douglas on Thursday. Asked him if there was anyone else in the country he admired for their ability to shoot the alley-oop or pass the alley-oop. He just looked at us and grinned for the longest time. Nope, finally, nope. He is the best at it. The alley-oop was a set play that they put in three years ago, but now everybody scouts them. And there's the good outside shooting by Bardo. Kendall Kill gets the first kill. All right. And it's 62 all with 10.44 to go. He has hit some big outside shots, Gill. on the trampoline. Taken away, loose ball, Thompson gets it back. Billy Owens, mid-air adjustment. Coleman reaches for it. Back to Rowe. Thompson, oh, yeah. got it. Heads up play by Rowe that time to make the defense adjust to him and then find Thompson on the wing. Bardo gets it back to Kendall Gill. Matt Rowe. That's his second. If this remains as tight a ball game as it is right now, going down the stretch, you'd have to have, say that Illinois would be favored because they'd have the opportunity if some of their key players at least aren't in foul trouble to use that Syracuse disease, but not ability to hit foul shots to their advantage. We're under 10 minutes. The winner here takes on Michigan and Seattle. Coleman with yet one more rebound. His sixth in the ball game. 9.45 to go. Billy Owens. Oh, the tip is great. Oh, they have him listed at 6'4, Thompson. I don't think he's 6'2. Lou Henson said of Stephen Thompson, I've never seen anybody jump like that. I remember another Thompson who played for North Carolina State who wasn't bad. First name of David. 
Kenny Battle gets the basket. And Sherman Douglas was down for just a second. 66-64. What Illinois is doing so effectively is advancing the ball quickly. And then uh, I think Syracuse are losing their concentration. They have big people to get out and deny. They usually deny everybody pretty well. There's the pass to Sherman Douglas. Irvin Small with a foul. And they use the old post pattern on the press, bring everybody up, and as they're overplaying Douglas, they throw that long court pass like they do in football. But they got back, good adjustment that time by the biggest guy on the court for uh, Illinois, Small. Even though he ended up fouling him, they Dave, stopped two. David Johnson and Herman Harid come into the lineup now. Sherman Douglas at the line where he's two of two today. Boy, he was deadly down the stretch against Missouri. Six in a row in the last minute. I just find it so hard to believe that these, this caliber of basketball player cannot shoot foul shots. This whole team seems to be seized with this problem. I don't know if it seems to be. They are. 68-64, back to a four-point edge. Syracuse continues to hang on. It's been tied in this half twice, but the Illini have never led. They got Bardo fouling Thompson. That's four fouls on Steve Bardo, the best defender for Illinois. And decision now for Lou Henson. That is a big potential loss for Illinois because he's the big guard, 6'6 six, six guard, that really helps him on the boards. And if he's got to sit down, they got to go small. Stevie Thompson goes to the line where he is hitting on the season. Uh, less than 50%. There's the foul difficulty. Smith and Bardo with four each. Thompson has three. Stevie Thompson, one of two today. Oh, oh, yeah. One and one. Lane violation. Oh. Oh, is Thompson going to talk to Harid? I make one, and you're in too soon? But there's Thompson cheering him on, saying forget about it. Nine minutes to go. Winner gets Michigan in Seattle. Duke and Georgetown next. The winner of that one takes on Seton Hall in Seattle. All of it on CBS. 8.50 remaining. Steve Bardo. Oh, what a leap. Nick Anderson. And he'll shoot a couple. That was college's version of Charles Barkley that time, that offensive rebound. He just knocked the one man that was trying on the top of your screen. You're going to see, and he just bangs up there over the top, and if he'd been able to go up quicker, he would have overpowered Coleman to boot. Nonetheless, he ends up at the foul line shooting two. He's a nice, nice fellow, this guy. Well, we were talking to him, he said, I slow down basketball. I can't stand it when we have to stand around. Talked about playing in the Prairie State League with a lot of the pros, Charles Oakley, Terry Cummings, Greg Hodges, and so on. A lot of his teammates said last summer, said, boy, that'll cause you to improve your game. Otherwise, you get grossly embarrassed in front of your girlfriend. Right. 68-66, 835 to go. Illinois trails by two. Billy Owen seems to have cooled off a little bit, lost his shooting touch here. On the floor, it's Thompson and Douglas with Rowe, Coleman, and Billy Owen starting five back on the court now for Syracuse. And this is the time of the game that Douglas took over against Missouri. Under 10 on the shot clock, rebound, Kendall Gill. And a chance to tie once again or take the lead with the three. Battle. What happens is Syracuse is retreating up the middle of the court and not going out and getting their men on the wings. And as soon as the uh, Illinois player can get it, he's heading to the hoop, and he has the advantage. Battle has 16 points now. And the third tie of this half, we've been tied at 50-50. 
62 all and 68 all. 7.43 to go. Alley up, Coleman. Small and Douglas fight point. Taken away by Kendall Gill with a great move. Bardo calls for the ball. They go underneath to Anderson. And a chance for the Illini to take the lead for the first time since the opening moments. No wonder they named the trophy after him. Battle has 18. Illinois has the lead. I think defensively, Illinois has found the way they've got to play Syracuse right now. They're really dropping down off Thompson and using his man to help out on everybody else. Foul is called on Kenny Battle. That's his third, so the foul problems mount for Lou Henson's team, who is asking for supplication or intervention. Palms up. Help on Easter from Sunday, exactly. Okay. That's a prayer when you have the palms up. And that sends Billy Owens to the line. David Johnson back in for Matt Rowe. Owens one of one. Now the Illinois defense has stayed with uh, Rowe, so his three-point shooting has not been able to utilize. So now Beheim is opting with Johnson to say, we're going to challenge you on the boards and see if we can get some running into our game. Syracuse lays back, they play in spurts themselves, and they count on at least one or two spurts a game to go an eight, ten-point run without you scoring. Owens ties it up, 640 remaining. The winner gets Michigan. Anderson, no. Battle, battles, no. Anderson gets it. underneath there get out of their way the position was clones as they were tabbed by our colleague Curry Kirkpatrick 72 70 Illinois none taller than 6 8 none shorter than 6 4 in the starting lineup Douglas for three short the size came into play that time Gill got a piece of that three-point attempt Huge rebound edge now, and he was close through most of the first half. 540 remaining, Kendall Gill. Bad gamble by Thompson that time. You never try and do that. You gotta stick with the best outside shooter. Gill's got 16. The Illinois lead is four. Dish to Coleman for two. 520 remaining in the ball game. Syracuse is simply trying to get that speed into action here. That's the first time we've seen it this half. David Johnson with a foul. Lots of good rebounding going on right here. Look at smaller people over the top. Owens afraid to challenge. There's Nick Anderson. Nobody going up to block the shot because of the foul trouble. And Nick knew it. Matt Rowe comes back into the lineup, and David Johnson sits down with his third foul. Nick Anderson will go to the line. He leads all scorers for Illinois with 22. Nick, and An Nick Anderson the other day, uh, the press conference said uh, after uh, beating Louisville without uh, two of their key players, it felt like I played 135 minutes. After this one, it's going to feel like he played 335 minutes. He's scrapping. He's an example of what Lou Henson is now doing so well. One of the Chicago kids who has come down to play for the Illinois team. They had a drought for years when they couldn't attract the best talent in Chicago. And Anderson misses, but Bardo rebounds.
missed it, but look at this over the rim. The quickness paying off. Nick Anderson got the basket that has given Illinois a five-point lead, but the Illini have two players with four fouls. Just one of the small interesting facets about this Illinois team. They've only had three players foul out all year long. Here's Matt Rowe. And he goes down hard. Immediately helped up by Nick Anderson, who was... Well, they, were, they were measuring him. He doesn't have the breakaway speed, but there's two of them trailing him, and he knows he has to try and go up and cram it. And that took him way off the ground, and he just lost his feet. But both the Illinois players were after the ball. I'm amazed that at the very least, Matt Rowe didn't lose his breath or have the wind knocked out of him. Rowe with nine points today, all on three-pointers. Like he just had a little uncomfortable moment after lunch. Well, the Syracuse free throw problem not evident today. Not really. 15 of 21. And Rowe will shoot two. Here's a foul shooter that, you know how you contract uh, uh, measles? This guy used to be a 90% foul shooter. And he's down in the 60s. Maybe it's... Maybe it's something in the locker room, like it's, Legionnaire's disease. It's contagious. Substitution, David Johnson will come in for a limping Matt Rowe, but he gets one of two. 77-73, 4.52 remaining in the ballgame. The winner goes up against Michigan. If it is Illinois, beaten Michigan twice already this year. If it is Syracuse, they played last year and the year before, and they split the series. So both teams familiar with Michigan. The Illini obviously much more so. Bardo, perfect. Big hoop, the size. Douglas got picked off. The big guard to very easily get over the top of Douglas. Sherman Douglas. This is where Douglas has to take over. In the prior ball game, he started going one-on-one. -on -one, and it worked. 4-10 to go. You heard the call switch. Owens with a chance for three. And that is five fouls on Steve Bardo, the best defensive player for Illinois. We're at the Metrodome in Minneapolis, Minnesota, 4.08 remaining. Vern Lundquist and Tom Heinsohn. Steve Bardo becomes only the fourth Illinois player to foul out of a game all year long. That's in 35 games. This takes a real preeminence right now because uh, he was doing a creditable job on Douglas or anybody else he was defending. But coming down the stretch, you would think that Bardo would have been the guy that would defend against Douglas. And now they're going to have to come back with Larry Smith, who's much smaller. And Douglas is more familiar with playing smaller guards than bigger guards. So it may give Douglas the opportunity to start to go one-on-one. -on -one. And Larry Smith comes back in playing with four fouls. Billy Owens goes to the line. It's 79-75, 4.08. Man that Jim Beheim said sacrificed, didn't, showed no selfishness whatsoever, was willing to fit into the system. No ego. Lane violation. They'll shoot another. And he said, uh, if Billy Owens had not done what he'd done this year, we wouldn't be where we are today. So one more chance. And he gets this one. 79-76, 4-06 to go in the ballgame. Illinois with three timeouts left. Syracuse with two. The Anilai trailed by as many as 12 in the first half. We're down by seven at halftime. And a timeout is called by Lou Henson. It comes with 3.55 remaining in the game. Jim may take on either Georgetown or Duke. And that game follows ours. 3.55 to go. What are you doing? Having tea with an Englishman or something? King Jim? King Jim. David Johnson with the foul. And that's his fourth. 
Matt Rowe on the Syracuse bench after he went into the stanchion under the basket, getting his foot iced down, and now he's going to come back into the ball game. Now they're going to try and protect uh, Johnson for the, his rebounding ability the last couple of minutes of the game. So Rowe is really going to have to play some defense. They have not been able to utilize his good offense from the perimeter because they've put a man right in his jersey with him. As the pain. Well, that was uh, during the timeout. Here's Nick Anderson on the line. No. And the rebound, Thompson. What a big miss. Front end of a 1-1, 79-76. 340 to go. Kendall Gill is going to stay on Douglas. Got a four-inch height advantage and can smother a lot of Douglas's penetration. See Sherman directing the traffic as they swing the ball to the left side. 19 in the shot clock. 79-76, 3-16 remaining. Billy Owens, spin move, runs into Hamilton and banks it in. Boy, it could have been a foul on that one, too, and right underneath Billy Owens, but that's his versatility inside or with that good dribbling ability, make moves going to the hoop. Five straight points by Syracuse. That ends the streak, Kenny Battle. I'll tell you, what a great, smart play that time. Took the, the trap defense, looked immediately to the weak side, and Syracuse is letting him score some easy ones. Three-point edge for the Illini. 240 remaining. Owens stolen. Anderson dishes. Short. They're all the same size. They all play over the top of the rim. 220 to go. Timeout. Syracuse. Watch the stuff on the follow by Kendall Gill. There's the uh, push by Nick Anderson trying to hit battle. He tries to get up a shot, but Gill the guard for the scram. Illinois 2. Both teams are in the bonus at the free throw line. The possession arrow Syracuse. 2-18 remaining. And on the court now, Billy Owens with 20 points. Stephen Thompson, Sherman Douglas, Matt Rowe, and Derek Coleman for Syracuse. It's Kendall Gill on Sherman Douglas. He's held him to 12 points today. There's the switch as he goes out on road. Now they switch back. Stephen Thompson, a little outside his range. Shot clock at 20. Rowe rims out. And rebound Anderson. Foul Stephen Thompson. Uh, coming out of the timeout, Jim Beheim said, we're going for Matt Rowe's three. And he probably feels that Matt Rose is as good as anybody. But they, when you take the outside shot at this juncture in the ball game, no chance of anybody fouling out. And there's some serious foul trouble on the Illinois team. That's the fourth on Stephen Thompson. Coleman has three. Johnson has four. Anderson is three of five at the line today. That is Mary Henson. The Illinois team has not been to the Final Four since 1952. You know, I think uh, Lou Henson is a very misunderstood coach. He coaches confusion, but it's organized confusion. Row for three. Cuts the lead in half. It's 84-81. Trap. Battle gets it. Nick Anderson, down two, as he went at Derek Coleman. Well, he made sure he got his body between Coleman and himself. Coleman should have gone up and challenged him a little bit on that one. 86-81, Sherman Douglas dishes it off for the stuff from Billy Owens. Uh, Douglas is the guy that's really got to get the ball and start to penetrate against this bigger guard and create openings for Coleman and Owens. Kendall Gill. And the foul is on Douglas. That sends Lowell Hamilton to the line. Coming up next, Duke versus Georgetown. The winner of that game takes on Seton Hall in Seattle. 
next Saturday. The winner of this one gets Michigan. And the Illini in conference play this year defeated Michigan twice. They won at Michigan the last week of the regular season. And they also beat Michigan at home. Here's Lowell Hamilton. Two of six at the line today. Now they see pressure defenses every day at practice themselves. So Syracuse going out there trying to harass this Illinois team is not going to work as easily as I'm sure Jim Beheim would wish. Hamilton for the year in the last four minutes is hitting 71%. But he misses them both. And the lead is three. We're under a minute. Just playing Syracuse, you get the disease. Rowe can tie it with a three-pointer. Douglas back to Rowe. And look at Larry Smith, Channel Rowe. They try to pick. 40 seconds to go. The dish right in the hands of Larry Smith. And a foul in the backcourt. What a great defensive play by Hamilton, who switched and just took away the corner of the basket. You watch right now as he comes down, and as Hamilton just cuts him off at the pass and out of bounds. And there is the, the only option he had was to try and get it back into the middle, and boy, did they rotate. 45. Larry Smith. But you, you saw on that play, too, Vern, the fact that the six-foot ability, uh, the size of Douglas, they're arguing over who should shoot the free throw. And it's a big, big point. They're arguing. This brings back memories of Iowa, North Carolina earlier in the year. Now, we thought Smith was fouled, and they're trying to send Hamilton to the bench. Uh, Hamilton uh, to the free throw the guy that was really warded off. Well, he sinks it. Remember, early in the season, Iowa, North Carolina, when they snuck in the free throw shooter. Now, we thought it was Larry Smith, but they're sending Hamilton to the free throw line. Now, what really happened, Vern, was that Hamilton shielded a Douglas off from the basket, and when he made the pass, he pulled Hamilton on a sort of a deliberate foul right in front of the referee. The correct man, in my opinion, is at the free throw line right now. Well, they checked twice at the bench. It is a correctable error, and the call was confirmed at the bench. And Hamilton gets one of two. The lead is four. 30 seconds to go. Douglas for three. Yes! Great Pickman to knock off Gill, the defender, to allow him to get the shot off. It's 87-86. Official is standing right there as Hamilton comes over to shield them. Now you watch as Douglas holds Hamilton and the official looking at it all the way and calling it on Sherm Douglas. The official is John Moreau and he did call the foul on Douglas and was pointing in the direction of Hamilton. And then we saw the contact on Larry Smith. And timeout has been called. A time is on Illinois. Illinois, not a bad free throw shooting team, 71% over the season, and Anderson, the least successful of them. Immediately after the foul, get it inbounded and advance the ball. They already called the play on what they're going to do in the huddle. Set the lineup for you. Larry Smith, Battle, Gill. Marcus Liberty is back on the court now. Number 30, the sophomore from Chicago. And Liberty gets the inbound pass. And he is fouled by Derek Coleman. Now they're going to put the first-year player on the line. And a lot of confidence right now by the Illinois players, giving them the five, saying, you're our man. Here is one of the most widely publicized recruits of two years ago. Had to sit out last year. Academic problems. Marcus Liberty has struggled a bit, but for the season, with the game on the line in the final four minutes, this year, he is 22 of 27. He's hitting 82% in the last four minutes of games. Too strong. Tip. Kendall Gill kicks it out. And Kenny Battle will go to the line. That is five fouls.
falls on the general Sherman Douglas. And will this be his final game for Syracuse? 15 points. For the first team All-American, leader in career assist points and leadership, you might say, for Syracuse. Uh, no question. And coming down the stretch, you absolutely need Sherman Douglas in there. They don't have a comparable part, a specialist, to run this ball club. He's done it so effectively all year. When he was out of the lineup early in the season, Syracuse really had some problems. But getting back to the strategy, uh, again, Illinois has to make these two and without that great ball handler picking out who's the open man 6-8 seldom used freshman number 40 has taken his place now Ken Battle the senior leader he's 87 percent of the last four minutes of games that makes Kenny Battle 21 of 24 from the line in the final four minutes of games this year The time is 14. Thompson, short. Gill, five seconds to go. coach Johnny Red Kerr was one of the stars and they lost to St. John's in the semifinals you know when we listened at the press conference to some of these uh, players of Illinois talk about each other you can see there was genuine fondness and respect for each other and they played they had to have that type of attitude amongst themselves in order to do what they did today against Syracuse to come from behind great effort Back to Jim and JB. 